and to pretend as if this is that, but you know it is wrong. And between his house and the sanctuary where Peter was, all through that place, the thing was telling him, tell him, tell him. Tell him the lie, deceive him, and then they say they have gifts of the spirit and the word of knowledge. Go and test them whether they will say, Praise the Lord, you brought this large amount. Now, the devil knew that Peter the apostle had the gift of the word of knowledge, and that Peter will know, but he wanted to destroy Ananias and wanted to destroy Sapphira and the wife. That's the reason why all the time he was going from his house, he was going to the sanctuary, to the temple, or wherever to meet Peter. The devil kept on whispering, Remember, remember, uh, you need to have a real recognition, and eventually, Peter said Ananias why at this time of revival why at this time when the Holy Ghost came up and he is really baptizing people and feeling people and were being revived why at such a time like this healing is taking place deliverance is taking place and the power of the Lord moving in a way we've never seen before why is it at this time Satan feels thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Was it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You have not lied unto man, but you have lied unto God. That, 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 that the trick of the devil, he says, is an ordinary man, a man like yourself. What's his name? Peter. Go and tell him, are you fearing Peter? Are you fearing a special appearance? Is he not a man like yourself? No, you have not lied unto man, but you have lied unto God. The devil will make people to think he's just a man. Call him pastor, he's just a man. Call him apostle, he's just a man. Call him director, he's just a man. And the devil will say it doesn't matter. Lying to an ordinary man, and they will give them a reason for telling the lie but Peter set him straight and said no you are not lying to me you are lying unto God and you know what happened he died right there we're looking at first Corinthians chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 5 we're being told by the scriptures very clearly that Satan is the source of temptation to sin it says in first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 the fraud ye not one the other i wanted to underline that word the fraud when somebody practices fraud and he cheats the other person in business and he tries to do four one nine and he tries to get money out of another person by craft by cunning method they call it fraud and if he does it he's accused of defrauding Another person now is talking about husband and wife, and he is uh, saying, Defraud ye not one the other. That he is uh, the, uh, the husband has a right to the wife, the wife has a right to the husband. And when you know the, the wife is always saying, I'm tired, I'm weak. I'm feeling sleepy. I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm even sick. You will not be sick in Jesus' name. And then you deny your husband. Or it's the husband denying the wife that she, you know, at this, uh, at this age now, I think you should understand that the body is no more as fresh as it used to be. And 
he's always giving excuse and he's pushing the woman to go out and do whatever and if the woman does that she yields to temptation and and then if the woman comes to say my husband look at what i uh -huh, we're going to tell the pastor we're good, but you are the one that pushed her out the word of god is saying very clearly defraud ye not one the other except it be with consent for a time that she may give yourselves to fasting and to prayer and come together again and come together again that satan tempt you not temptation is the work of satan satan will not get you satan will not get me he says so that satan tempts you not for your incontinency that is for your uh, inconsistency and you are going apart apart and apart and you are more familiar with men outside than you are familiar with your husband when those men when they call you outside and you talk talk and talk that time you are not tired that time you are not weak that time you are not sick it's when your own husband the closest person to you and the one the lord has given you that you will fulfill god's will with him that the time you are tired or maybe it's the man the man is always tired he's always tired uh, can we be together tonight i'm sorry I'm, you know i'm tired you know me now i'm the weaker vessel but when other men call you from outside and you talk and talk and talk on the phone and nowadays they even use a zoom and they see what, and you find the woman laughing laughing and you say but this woman said she was tired no it's the temptation of the devil the lord deliver us from the devil in jesus name he will not get you I said they will not get you if you're in the habit of, you know, being pushing your husband away, pushing your wife away, and you are closer to men outside, closer to women outside, talk and talk and talk without stopping, even, even at night. At the time, you should even, you know, the, the man calling you from outside, you understand. The woman calling you from outside, you know, look at the time. I should release that woman. I should release that man to be in his family. They don't do that. You're yielding to temptation. The Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. Point number three there. Number three, we're looking at the root. The root of temptation and the root, they call it drought in other places. The drought from temptation to sinfulness we're looking at james chapter one james chapter one i'm reading from verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own laws and enticed that's the root that's what brings the temptation is drawn away is led away of his own lost and enticed and then in verse 15 it says but then, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. We're looking at, um, and we're looking at that, and it says, this is how it comes, how temptation comes, and how people yield and surrender to temptation. Joshua chapter seven, reading from verse twenty-one, Joshua chapter 7 verse 21 when i saw that's where it begins through the eye gauge when i saw among the spoils a goodly babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight then i coveted number one i saw now you can see something accidentally like um, david saw Bathsheba washing herself and she he saw her nakedness accidentally but now thinking about that what he saw 
and ruminating on that what he saw and appreciating what he saw and desiring what he saw that is where the problem of temptation begins now in the world in which we live there is so much you are searching for an information on the on the net wikipedia or whatever and all of a sudden something comes up that's accidental you didn't bring that one up but you appreciate that you look at that you gaze at that you think of that and it's really bringing passion and uh, sensuality from your heart and you keep on looking at that now that's beyond just accidentally seeing something or it may be that you know some of uh, these things that come up and uh, you know and you stay there and you're looking into that and you know it is wrong. How do you know it's wrong? If, um, you know, it's in the night and your husband happens to be coming along, you find a way to cleverly cover it up. Now, if it's not sinful, why are you covering it up? And, or if your wife is coming and you say, you know, I don't want this woman to see that because I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't want her to see that this is what I'm watching. And then you cleverly, uh, you know, stop that, close that. Who are you deceiving? It's no more accidentally. You saw and then you coveted and it says, and you, I took them. I saw, I coveted and I took and it says behold they are they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver and under each as well we're looking at um, Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 3 rather Hebrews chapter 3 we're looking at verse 12 it says take each brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Temptation, if you yield to temptation, it makes you to depart from the living God. It tells us in verse 13, in verse 13, but exhort one another and daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hiding through the deceitfulness of sin verse 14 it says for we are made partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end hold the beginning of your faith of your confidence of your consecration steadfast until the end we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily to temptation the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily nobody is forcing it on you in fact even the phones we use we can control our phone and if you see that something comes in and you know that that source is always sending something to you that will pollute your mind that will defile your mind you know already that that is what you are going to see if you open it can't you shut it up can't you block that side and say i will not yield to that or if it's a man the man is always coming i'm talking physically now he's always coming and you know that whenever he comes he has something in his lips it's going to introduce something. It's going to say something. It's going to drag you to something you know, that eventually you might not be able to shake off. He wants to visit you. And every time he visits, you know, if Jesus came at such a time with that pollution, with that defilement, you will miss heaven. Because it says, Thou hast heard, thou shalt not commit adultery. But... If you look on a woman to lust after her, you've committed it already in your heart. If you look on a man 
to lust after him. You've done it already in your heart. And so you understand if a messenger of Satan, if a tempter, if a temptress is coming to you, there's no point saying, what can I do now? Shut your door. Uh, getting to heaven is not child's play. You have to say, here is where I stand. And that is how to overcome. You will overcome. I will overcome. The Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. If you succumb, it brings death. Because it tells us in James chapter 1, reading from verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own laws and entice in verse 15 in verse 15 it says then when lost as conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 18, reading from verse 30. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will, I, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin if you yield it ruins you it destroys you it pulls you away from the kingdom of god and it puts you in the direction of going to that other side where you don't want to go three things we're looking at number one number one spiritual death of all who are living and succumbing under temptation. Number two, such death of the lifestyle of surrendering to temptation. Number three is the second death after a lifetime of yielding to temptation. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at spiritual death of all who live and succumb under temptation. Uh, look at uh, chapter 7 of the Psalms. Psalms chapter 7. And we're reading here from verse 11. It says, God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. Do you know, when you go in the direction of wickedness, yielding to temptation, God is angry with you you might you know call him good names great names and praise him but if you are succumbing to temptation and you know it is temptation because it's always dragging you down or maybe apart from being temptation to you that interaction with that other person is bringing temptation to him or bringing temptation to her and as you do that god is angry with the wicked every day it tells us in verse 14 in verse 14 behold he traveled with iniquity and he has conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood we're looking at isaiah Chapter 59, and I'm reading from verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. It hinders a prayer because the spiritual death, spiritual death means your soul is separated from God. It means your whole personality is separated from God because of your sin it tells us in first timothy chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 first timothy chapter 5 we're looking at verse 6 it says she that liveth in pleasure is dead separated from god while she liveth she 
that liveth in pleasure. You understand? Uh, recently, when we spoke about um, about salvation, about justification, we said the salvation from the power of sin, the salvation from the pollution of sin, the salvation from the pleasure of sin. If you derive pleasure, sinful pleasure, fleshly pleasure in what you are doing, you are yielding to temptation and it's dead, spiritual dead, because she that liveth in pleasure, the pleasure of the flesh, and the pleasure in your emotion, and the pleasure in your feeling, although other people may not know, but you know that you derive pleasure from that temptation, and you're yielding to that, she or he that liveth in pleasure is dead, separated from God, while she liveth. The Lord purge every one of us completely in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, sad death for the lifestyle of surrendering to temptation. Sad death. We've read about an answer already. Sad death. Sudden death. We've read about Sapphire the wife. Sad death. Sudden death. And uh, you, uh, you look at Acts chapter 12. In Acts chapter 12, we're reading from verse 21. Acts 12, verse 21. And upon his said day, Herod, a rich in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them verse 22 in verse 22 and the people gave a shout saying it is the voice of a god and not of a man that the temptation they wanted him to you know pump up himself lift up himself and they wanted him to accept you are a god you are not just a man and the temptation came and he fell for the temptation look at the next verse in verse 23 it says and immediately the angel of the lord smote him because he, he gave not god the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost uh, we're looking at uh, proverbs chapter 10 Verse 27, it says, The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Because they yield to temptation, yield to temptation. They don't know how to say no to Satan, say no to the devil, say no to the tempter, say no to the temptress. And they cut short their own lives. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. In Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men, wants to die. But after this, the judgment. After this, judgment. When somebody dies here, sad death, that because of the temptation to go, to push, to drive, to move here, to move there, and unfortunately, he destroys his, his himself. He dies suddenly. His sad death is going to face the Lord in eternity. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at the second death after a lifetime of yielding to temptation. Yielding to temptation. Let me ask you. You say you're born again. You have a lifestyle of yielding to temptation. Do you ever say no to that thing drawing you, dragging you, attracting you? Do you ever say no to that thing that is of the flesh? Do you ever say no to that thing that is weakening you and weakening you no matter how much you pray and no matter how far you go in consecration? 
when that thing comes do you ever say no the people who don't know how to say no and the people who don't check their mind they don't check their heart and they don't check their propensity to suck in in evil there's going to be spiritual death there's going to be sad death and there's going to be the second death after a lifetime of just yielding and yielding and yielding to temptation and uh, look at uh, the word of god in james chapter 1 reading from verse 15 then when lost as conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death bringeth forth death in the first chronicles chapter 10 first chronicles chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 13 so saul died for his transgression which he committed against the lord even against the word of the lord which he kept not and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it this was the soul a king when he came to the throne he sought for all the witches and the wizards and all the necromancers and all the people that dealt for familiar spirit and ex and they got them out of the land after a person has so consecrated himself and that everybody knew now he got a problem and he wanted solution and he said go look for me and search for a witch somebody having familiar spirit and when they got this witch of endor she reminded them you know so you know how he drove everyone away you want to endanger my life no soul had changed it's not the same man of conviction as it was when he came on the throne many people like that they have changed the things they will not touch many years ago the things they will not taste many years ago the things they will not come near many years ago the things they were run away from many years ago today they befriend them they go along with them and their lives are totally changed like Saul and we're told God then smote him and killed him for his transgression look at verse 14 in verse 14 and inquired not of the lord therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto david the son of jesse i pray god will preserve our lives preserve our consecration that the vomit that we, have, that we have given up before we don't go back again like the dog to swallow up a, a vomit anymore in Jesus name Revelation chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 8 in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 for the fearful the unbelieving the abominable the murderers and the mongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars please remember that white lie all liars professional lies all liars they were trained in their field that whenever this happens and your director asks you tell him a lie they say it's for the profession but all liars or maybe lying in the family that you know the wife is lying to the husband and the husband is lying to the wife i'm telling him that lie because you know he has hypertension and if i tell him the right thing is his blood pressure will shoot up he might die my sister that's an excuse if you are going to tell the truth 
tell the truth if you want to get to heaven those who trade in line and those who kind of the merchandise of lying they will not get to heaven all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with brimstone and then there are people uh, well this work uh, there, there's no work now in the country and if i tell the management the real truth about this i will lose my job if i lose my job how do i try to get another job and because of that they told a lie they cover that lie with another lie and when you're about to discover that they cover it with another lie you might keep your job you might not keep the job even with the line because god is on the throne he can still make you to be suspended or to be dismissed even if you told the lie but the point is whether you keep the job you don't keep the job all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone which is the second death there are people that you know go about all they can do is i saw you talking to the pastor i hope you didn't tell him the right thing about that thing we did and about that thing we're covering up please don't get me to trouble never tell the pastor or anybody that can tell him that this is what happened and you're a liar and you're covering up the lie and you're influencing another person to cover up the lie but please remember please remember the fearful i'm afraid what will happen if i tell the truth and the unbelieving i don't believe god can protect me if i tell the truth and the abominable you've done abominable things instead of confessing so that you can be cleansed and you can be washed abominable you're still into that thing and all murderers and all mongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and with brimstone which is the second death was the second death the final separation from the almighty god all through eternity it is the death of death the death of death in our studies in mathematics where you say d times d we say that is d squared death of death you know that word of when you want to really calculate you remove that off and you put times so death of death death times death d squared is the second death final there is no coming back from there that's the reason why if you're a real child of god whatever temptation comes i say no i say no and look at verse 27 in verse 27 and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie or manufactures a lie or creates a lie but only they which are rich in the lamb's book of life we come to point number three now point number three resources for the saints victory over temptation the resources we have the strength we have the conviction we have the ability we have so that we overcome temptation temptation coming from any direction temptation coming from maybe your flesh maybe your loss maybe your pride of life maybe your surrounding maybe your habit maybe from other people where we'll have a victory i will have the victory confirmed in jesus name three things we're looking at here number one god a protector and preserver from temptation number two grace a portion and power over temptation number three godliness through prayer and perseverance against 
temptation. Look at number one. Number one, God, a protector. God, a preserver from temptation. In Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading here from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast, well, hast taken, for she is a man's wife. I, I think you might know the story. Actually, um, Abraham was now getting old and old and old. And uh, Sarah, the wife, was also old, old, old. But she still looked pretty. And so Abraham told Sarah, anywhere we go, you know, these uh, unbelieving uh, kings, no matter how many women they have to their record, they still want, uh, you know, people like you. So tell him, uh, tell them, uh, you're my sister. It was actually Abraham uh, that planted that lie in uh, Sarah. And uh, so they got together. And they were asking, and Sarah said, I'm his sister. Oh, if you're his sister, I'd like to, you know, get married to you. And she didn't say no. And God had promised that he was going to give the promised son to Abraham and Sarah. And so uh, Abimelech took uh, Sarah now. They had not slept together. He has not touched her. People say, what did I do? Have I touched her? Have I had canon knowledge of her now? Abimelech had not had what you call canon knowledge. But God came to him and said, by taking another man's wife, by taking her interest away from the husband, away from the home, and you keep her with you, you are a dead man. You see, God is serious about sin. And he, he doesn't measure, he doesn't interpret sin like we human beings interpret sin. He interprets it from the notion coming from heaven. He said, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart. He said, God, I'm righteous. That's what he thought. But the righteous man is going to die the death of a sinner. The man told me, I was working on his information. He told me that this woman was a sister. And I walked on that, yet you walked on a lie. And yet you are going to die because sin a sin. There's no excuse before the Lord. And then it goes on to say, I know that thou didst age in the integrity of thine heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. I stopped you. I protected you. I prevented you from going into that woman because she is a woman of covenant. And the husband is a man of covenant. Even though God protected him, he now told him the truth that this one will kill you and kill your whole family and if you die in that condition i am righteous i am righteous i am saved i'm sanctified i didn't touch her i didn't do anything if you die in that condition god said you die and you will go to a lost eternity i also withheld thee from sinning against me therefore suffered i thee not to touch her and then in verse 7 in verse 7 it says now therefore restore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live and if thou restore her not 
if thou restore her not, if you say, uh, well, from what he told me, what have I done wrong? If you restore her not, if you don't get her back to her husband, so that she can be with her husband 100%. Not that you and Abraham are sharing her together. If you don't restore her, you will thou know thou that thou shalt surely die thou and all that are thine thank god the man woke up early in the morning and restored sarah his wife and abraham prayed for him and they did not die i will not die but if you are tossing with another man's wife judgment is coming if you are playing games with another woman's husband, judgment is coming. The Lord preserve us from every form of sin in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, grace, our portion and power over temptation. The grace of God is available. And God has so worked it out that no matter the temptation and no matter the challenge, He will give us abundant grace, enough grace we overcome in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient. For thee that's what the lord is telling you tonight my grace is sufficient for thee his grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ the rest upon me the power of christ will rest upon you the kind of power you have never known will come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Greater grace and higher grace and deeper grace coming into your life tonight in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Look at verse 15. 15. In verse 15, looking diligently. You see, to overcome temptation, we need to look diligently. Look at our hearts diligently. Look at our minds diligently. Examine our habits diligently. Examine the, the line we're following diligently. Examine the things we've been doing that will land us, will make us weaker will make this temptation stronger it says diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled let's go to verse 16 there in verse 16 it tells us it says lest and lest there be any fornicator a profane person as Esau, as Esau. Esau didn't understand. He was not watching over his birthright. Esau was not watching against the temptation that might come. All right, you want the lentils? Sell me your birthright. He was not watching. And unfortunately, he saw did not have anybody watching over him. The, the mother was not watching over Esau. All the mother was watching over was her dream. The dream she had when she conceived Esau and Jacob. And Isaac was not watching over Esau. All Isaac was watching was the venison that he ate and because of that his soul was left unprotected who is watching over you well your pastor here ought to be watching over you but when last they will cross each other on the way 
When last did you speak to me? When last did I speak to you? Am I watching over you? Obey, obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch for your soul as they that must give account, that they might do it with joy and not with grief. When last did you allow me to watch over you? And while I'm trying to watch over you in preaching, and I make the details so clear in my ministry of watching over you, are you not offended? Why is he talking like that? And why is he so clear? Why is he so detailed? I'm doing my work. I'm watching over you. And Esau did not have a father to watch over him, a mother to watch over him. And Jacob, his twin brother, was not watching over him. All Jacob was watching is how I can get that birthright from him. And so, look at him, just left like that. He himself was not watching over himself. No father, no mother, no brother, no pastor, no preacher, watching over him. And when the temptation came, okay, sell me your birthright. I said, all right, take it. What am I going to do with the birthright? I'm dying of hunger. In your life, watch. That's how we overcome in your life. And if you have somebody like me to talk to you and to preach to you and to explain to you and to say, looks like there's carelessness here. Looks like there's temptation there. And I'm trying to watch over you. And you're shaking your head and you're dodging and you're turning the other way. And you don't even want to, you, know, you don't want to say, hello, pastor, uh, this is my life and this is what I'm going through. And what we are talking about. About, uh, you know that day you were talking on temptation it's like you knew me and you were talking about me and you surrender yourself so that we can watch over you I pray you will not be lost I said you will not be lost uh, you know sometimes uh, when I'm you know when I come on I mention uh, young people I mention children I mention youth I mention choir I mention almost everybody so that I can watch over you the people that get offended uh -uh, what's, what's happening to the pastor this new year mentioning this and mentioning that okay if it's like that and then they react when you react like that you're saying pastor go your way read your bible and preach what you want to preach but don't apply the bible to me you are not watching over me i don't allow you to watch over me you'll be like esau that had nobody watching over him come back come back come back if you're still part of the congregation i'm going to watch over you i said i'm going to watch over you you push me this way, push me that way, I'll say, Father, forgive her, forgive him. He knows not, she knows not what he's doing. Otherwise, how will you push the driver out of the moving vehicle? Otherwise, how will you uh, kind of remove the belt and push the pilot out of the plane? You don't want to die, you will not die. We will keep watching over you. Our pastors will keep watching over you. Our preachers will keep on watching over you. And I hope our preachers will not become so afraid and so timid that we cannot watch over the sheep, the members the Lord has given us. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. You will not sell your birthright. We come to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at godliness through prayer and perseverance against temptation. Prayer, perseverance against temptation. If we will pray, God will protect us. God will preserve us. And God will deliver us from the tempter in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 26. We're looking at verse 41. Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
is prayer that will then bring up the flesh is strength to match the level of the willingness of the spirit so that temptation and sin will not overcome us will not overcome you tonight we're going to pray you're going to pray and i'm going to pray to you so that all the roots and the directions of temptation in the past tonight will become overcomers in jesus name and the grace to overcome and the godliness that god will plant in your heart so that you will now from now on resist the devil and he will flee from you the lord grant unto every one of us tonight in jesus name let's rise up now and mightily cry unto the lord and talk to the lord from the depths of our heart appreciate the direct message appreciate the direct warning appreciate the direct application of the word of god to your heart and to your life and say lord i need grace lord i need grace godliness you are the god who protects the god who preserves from every form of temptation stop seeing and stop giving that wrong statement and see if god is tempting me god is the one enticing me to do evil you know that's not right take that statement of your mouth and say lord i know when temptation comes it's not you it's satan it's the devil it's lucifer it's missed heaven and he's looking for people that will join him to go to hell that's why it's bringing the temptation that's why it's bringing the allurement of the world that's why it's bringing and presenting what will destroy you is presenting the poison as pleasure call upon the lord and say lord here i am i surrender i submit myself to you look at the source of that temptation look at the root the route the pathway of that temptation as it's coming and you are telling the lord oh lord i recognize that i realize that i see that that's how it comes then it weakens your heart weakens your mind weakens your life weakens your resolve what you want to tell the lord lord have mercy on me thank you lord for giving me a pastor watching over me as one that will give account i want to yield to the teaching i want to yield to the instruction so that he will do it with joy not to agree for that is unprofitable for you tell the lord surrender yourself to the lord And examine the lust of the flesh. Examine the pride of life. Examine all those gadgets, these modern gadgets that you use, and you only weaken your Christian life. Check up. I promise the Lord. Don't allow the gadgets 
to take away the Bible from your hand, from your heart, to take away your devotion, to take away your total surrender and submission to the Lord. Don't allow that. And don't allow all the social media news pornography and those things that attract your attention don't allow that to take away your consecration your resolve and to weaken your commitment to the Lord and your commitment to your home Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Do you still have the same consecration that you had many years ago? The same response to the word of God that you had many years ago? Do you still have that? The same submission of heart to the word of God that you had many years ago, or are you now judging the message, evaluating the message, classifying the message? That's not why you came. You came so that God can find you out, fish you out, help you to discover where you stand yes I know but why is he talking like that I don't want him to talk I don't want him to be afraid to fidget I want him not to speak out of conviction how do you want him to talk Go back to the cross. Say, Lord, here I am. I give myself, I surrender myself completely unto you. Let him wash you, let him purge you, let him purify you. Temptation can ruin if you yield to it. Temptation will cause death if you yield to it. It will bring spiritual death, separate you from God. It will bring sad, sorrowful death, sudden death. If you yield to it, and if you don't have a chance to repent before you die, and you keep on with the lying and the lying and the lying and the deception, and pushing away your teacher, pushing away the leader that will tell you the truth if you die in that condition. It will be like Esau. Mother not watching over him, only watching over her dream. Father not watching over him, only watching the food that Esau will give as a hunter. Jacob not watching over him. Just watching for the birthright. And he too, hunter, 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 not watching over himself. And after all, there is spiritual death. There 
There is a sad, sudden, sorrowful death. There is a second death. Get all the grace you need. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Get God on your side that he'll protect you, preserve you every time. But you will not go in the direction of temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pray, pray, pray without ceasing, pray with faith, pray with expectation that he'll make you strong. Let him establish you once again in godliness, a godly heart, a godly mind. A godly lifestyle, free, free from sin. God grant you grace to deliver you. He'll preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom. Whosoever comes, I will in no wise drive him away. He loves you. He doesn't want you to drown the ocean of temptation. Love yourself too. And tell the Lord, your love, protect me. Don't listen to the lies of other people. I've been merely listening to the lie of Abraham. To the lie of Sarah, he is my brother, she is my sister. And then Abimelech took her. Don't listen to the lies of people. I just like you, I don't have any intention. Don't listen to their lies. Be holy. Your heart, your thought, your mind, be holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You want to see the Lord, don't you? That's why you came. You want to get to heaven? That's why you came. Even the righteous man, the righteous minister has to smite you. That will be oil. That will be joy for you. Even if we have to drag you to heaven, that will be joy for you. Surrender to the mercy, to the word. And say, Lord, do whatever you have to do to make me holy, to preserve me in holiness, so that when the trumpet shall sound, 
I will not be left behind. He answers prayer when you seek him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He gives grace, more grace, more grace. When you seek him in honesty, faithfully seeking all the grace you need to lead to please him. Watch and pray. Not only prayer, watch. Watch and pray. And if your local pastor is watching over you, accept. Don't isolate yourself. And if your cheers is watching over you, accept. Don't dodge the message. Don't act as if I'm all right. Give the chance to watch over you. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you prayed? I said, have you prayed? God has answered your prayer. More grace in Jesus' name. More strength in Jesus' name. More vigilance in Jesus' name. The Lord protect you. The Lord preserve you. The Lord perfect whatever is lacking in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for making it so plain that anyone hearing can read, can hear, and run. Lord, we thank you for your love. And revealing your mind, your heart unto us as to the source of temptation, as to the ruinousness of temptation, and as to the grace and the power made available so that we can overcome. Lord, I pray new strength, new power, more grace, abundant life will come to every one of us make us overcome in jesus name and for those who have trudged 
the path of hide and seek for such a long time and no pastor now is allowed to watch over them no leader no preacher is allowed to watch over them lord recover everyone to the path of restoration and righteousness in jesus name all the pranks and all the satanic method that will shield themselves away from the leader from the pastor from their overseer from the general superintendent so that nobody is watching over them and they want to be lost in the wilderness of temptation and sin lord recover everyone in jesus name and the pastors have become so fearful so timid and they fret and fidget and they cannot even talk to members anymore they cannot watch over members anymore they cannot watch over the youth over the adults over the workers full time or part time because they have been told stay away i don't want any anybody watching over me oh lord i pray all those on scriptural attitudes cancel in our church in jesus name the boldness and conviction of a true shepherd grant unto all our leaders and a submission and the absolute surrender of the sheep in the fold grant to all the members in jesus name those who are falling lift them up those who are backsliding, restore them. Those who are weak, strengthen them. And those who are at the verge of backsliding, hold them and pull them back in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray everyone that has become an Esau, only watching for material things, and the spiritual life is gone. Oh Lord, restore, recover every Esau today in Jesus' name. Anointing that breaks every yoke. Break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. That entrenched disobedience of the word of God, O oh Lord, uproot it from every heart in Jesus' name. And Lord, raise us up and lift us up so that we can walk in righteousness, in holiness, every moment, every day, for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm the truth in every life. Confirm the grace in every life. Confirm your protecting power in every life in Jesus' name. We're going back home in victory. We're going back home with triumph. And we're more than conquerors, everyone, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. started this last Thursday and I'm believing that when you come to start with you must bring the people that have problems because if there are no problems there can be no solution that night will be a night of miracle a night of power a night of healing a night of deliverance for everyone in Jesus' name. That will be your day, your time, your night of supernatural wonders. God has answered your prayer. Have you ever felt like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling? Like they're lost in the vastness of the deep? 
unanswered and unheard. We all have. But what if I told you that your prayers have power? He has answered your prayer. Imagine a wave of hope washing over you. Imagine burdens lifted, diverse healings taking place, and dreams blossoming into unique reality. This is the power of prevailing prayers. Your prayer, my prayer, our prayer will avail much in Jesus' name. This is your moment. This is your chance to experience the transformative power of prevailing prayers. Don't wait any longer. Join us at the GCK Crusade and let your faith take flight. At the February edition with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumiye live at the Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters, Rumor Dara, Port Harcourt, Nigeria, from the 22nd to the 27th of February 2024. With the Minister's Conference on 23rd, 26th, and 27th February. And the Epic Mind Shift Impact Academy coming up on the 24th of February. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Let's join hands and lift our voices unto God together because in unity there is power.